All right, uh, my name is Ethan. Welcome back to AI News. Today we have a special guest, Mitch, right? That's right. All right, uh, Mitch, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So um, I am a husband of 22 years, a father of three young adult children. We homeschooled all three of our kids all the way through from kindergarten all the way through uh, graduation of high school. I'm a plumber. I've been plumbing for 30 years. Oh, so Mitch Clayman's uh, plumbing that's it's right. your company. That's right. Yeah, I've been doing it a long time. I firmly believe that's the ministry that God gave me. There's a lot of uh, plumbers out there that gave us a bad reputation. And so what I want to do is make sure uh, I was a plumbing company that was serving the community well to help get rid of those other plumbing companies. And I do the same. I serve my employees well, too. I have helped a number of them start their own plumbing companies also. Wow. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. We need you. <laughs> to drain the swamp. Well, yeah, so that's what, you know, they keep saying they're trying to drain the swamp uh -huh. and uh, it, nothing's happening. It's not getting drained. I think there is a clog uh -huh. and I know how to fix a clog to drain. I've been doing that for quite a while. So. That's great. So uh, which district are you representing? So I'm running for State Senate District 30. It's the new District 30. Okay. They redistricted at the end of last year. Our current districts are in effect with the current politicians that are in office, but the new district takes effect for this election. So yeah, it's new district 30. It's basically Norwalk, Downey, La Mirada, up to 605, both sides of the freeway to the 60, including Pico Rivera, Montebello, South Omani, Whittier, La Habra Heights, and then down the 60 freeway all the way to Diamond Bar. And I actually have one Orange County city of Brea. So I've got Diamond Bar, Hacienda Heights, Roland Heights, portion of La Puente. It's a very big district. There's 40 state senators and there's 40 million people uh -huh. in our state. So it's roughly 1 million per senator. Oh, okay. We have some questions for you. We'd like to, you to answer. First, we want to talk about, I, I think you're a religious man, right? That's right. Religious freedom is really under attack right now. What's your thoughts on that? Religious freedom is under attack for Christians right mm -hmm. now. If you are of a different religion, there's not a lot of persecution going on, but they are really saying that as a Christian, uh, you're not allowed to speak. They've been doing this for a long time. I grew up seeing that the Bible was banned from schools and that prayer during my lifetime was banned at schools. And they continue to try to restrict believers from speaking up, which is really unfortunate because as a believer, the answers are, are in God's word. And if they take that out of our schools and our society and our government, then we don't have the wisdom of God's word in those areas. What do you think is the biggest problem in California right now? Because right now we have a whole lot of problems. The one thing that you really want to solve once you get there. I'm gonna list two. Okay. There's a whole list of issues we have, but I think they all boil down to two things. Okay. One is our elections here in the state. In LA County, there's 5.6 million registered voters. In 2017, Election Integrity Project California Judicial Watch won a lawsuit against LA County to remove 1.7 million potentially false bad registrations, bad voter registrations off the voter rolls. 1.7 million, their deadline for getting that removed, that would include voters who have moved, who have died, or who are otherwise ineligible to vote. They don't have to clean that up until the end of this year and they haven't done anything about that and that lawsuit was won back in 2017 or it was started in 2017 I think won in 2019. That means 1.7 million out of 5.6 million roughly 30 percent of the registered voters in LA County are potentially fake voters. Yeah. So I'm not discouraged by this. I'm encouraged that that means we need to get up God's people, and I believe he's stirring up his people. They need to get up and go out and vote in this election so we can get good people into office in our legislature so we can fix the voting laws. Because I think that's what affects us most today is not being able to get good people in because of the ways that they've baked into our system, ways to to cheat. And LA County is the epicenter. California is the epicenter. We figure out how to cheat in elections in our state and export it to every other state. So that's really unfortunate. The next thing that I think is the most important is our kids. That's because they really are our future, the next generation of leaders. And so the indoctrination of kids in our schools with CRT, promoting this sexual agenda, sexualizing of our children in our schools is terrible. What they're doing is they're breaking down our moral society and they're using propaganda and influence to teach our kids things which are contrary to uh, Christian belief and to what our constitution stands for. Cool. So I think it's really important to stand for parents' rights Yes, and to fix our education system here in California. Right now, we're trying to submit a bill it's about school choice. Mm -hmm. like, people have a lot of power here in California. Through the petition process, we can actually get 
a law put onto the ballot for the voters to vote for mm -hmm. if we get enough signatures. First run for California school choice had bad timing. There's a lot of other things going on that distracted from it, and we didn't get enough signatures. There's going to be another effort coming up real soon after November where we're going to start pushing for a new petition for California school choice. And what that does, basically all the money that goes to the public school, roughly about $15,000 per student, can be redirected so that the parent has the decision on where to spend that money so that you can send your child to private school, you could send them to public school, you could do homeschool in your own home, and that money, whatever you don't use, would go into a savings account for the student so that they could use that money up till they're age 30 to yeah, pay for college. Too. And so it's a really great program that empowers the parents and the students and gives us more options and competition for our schools. How did you educate your kids? Did you homeschool them? We, we did. We homeschooled all three of our kids all the way through, from kindergarten through high school. Two of my kids went private Christian school for one year, but that was by God's design. There were some great benefits we got out of that. What we did was, when first child was born, I talked to my wife about it, and it seemed like a giant, insurmountable task. There's a lot more resources these days to help parents homeschool. in homeschooling their yeah. kids. There wasn't a lot back when we started. And so we worked our way through that. We knew it was important. We saw the problems in the education system early on uh. and uh, we had a co-op at our church where there was a lot of parents that would help each other out and they would meet on Tuesdays and Fridays mostly the homeschooling would take place at home but we had a lot of uh, parents that would join together and do classes for the students at the church in fact one of the moms that is part of that program she has her master's degree in mathematics so she's able to teach the kids from elementary math all the way through calculus in our homeschool program because she has the education and the knowledge and ability to do so we had that and also we use the charter school programs and there's a lot of online resources there. do you think the homeschool is the only option for parents how are you going to solve education with kids if you got into office so I think that's why, like the school choice initiative, it really does give the parents back control. Uh -huh. It creates competition in the schools. Um, there are a lot of charter schools here in California. Yes. And when you give the parents the ability to decide where their money is spent, that creates competition among the schools to provide the best quality education to draw in more students. I think helping push forward for school choice is important. There's also things, uh, as a legislator, there's a lot of laws they're trying to pass right now that would take the power away from the parents to make choices for their students. Yeah. And so one of the things as legislator I can do is stand against those bills, bring more support in the legislature to stand against the bills, not just myself, and then also to write good laws that would support our parents and our students. Is your county always been a democratic county or... No, not always. So I wasn't really involved in politics, so I don't know a lot of history about politics in Los Angeles County, but I do know that we had a time very similar to the time now in the late 60s where there was a lot of uh, social unrest, distrust of government, riots. But at that time, we had Ronald Reagan become the governor of California. And at that same time in the late 60s, the Jesus movement started here in Costa Mesa. And God brought, during that time of social unrest in our nation and in our state, mm -hmm. God brought a season in California where we had a spiritual and societal revival. And the result of that was a lot of prosperity. When I was growing up, I was born in 1972, when I was growing up here in California, it was the second largest economy in the world, second only to the United States. Right now, I believe we're fifth largest in the world, but at the time, we are second. Wow. And that, that was prosperity that came about because of people turning back to God and having good elected officials in office. What do you think the relationship is with our faith and this country? How do you think the Christian faith should affect America? Yeah. I realized early on that my faith affects every area of my life. Okay. That when I go to church on Sunday and Wednesday, it talks about that the church is given pastors, prophets, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. And that work of the ministry, sometimes we call like men's ministry, women's ministry, children's ministry. But the work of the ministry that it's talking about at that point is, is the ministry of reaching out to this broken world, yes. taking the gifts and the abilities we have. And so even with my plumbing company, I considered that the ministry that God gave me to minister to my community, to minister to my employees, as far as providing work and providing a good job for my customers, but also sharing Jesus when the opportunities are, were present. 
It's the same thing for our role when it comes to government. Uh -huh. As Christians, that Christianity, that, that those things that God has put in us, are for us to go out and, and reach out and, and give back to the people. And one of the ways we can do that is we can serve in government. I was realizing that there are so many people that aren't serving the people that are in government. Uh -huh. We don't have servant leadership that yeah. are there for the benefit of the people. We have career politicians. And we didn't have that at our founding. There was no such thing as making uh, a job in government a career choice. What you would do is you would take time off your career to go serve in government for a season and then go back to your career. And oftentimes, your friend would watch over your business while you were serving in government. Yeah, what makes you want to run for office right now? Because you have a pretty successful company. Yep. And then uh, it, it makes a lot more than it does. what a state senator will make. So what makes you decided to run now? It, it's for that reason. It's because we don't have people that are standing up for the people. We have these career politicians. And when you make being a politician a career choice, just like you with your career or me with my career, it's to earn a living mm -hmm. so I can pay for my expenses and support my family. And it's to keep my job. Mm -hmm. So when you make being a politician a career choice, your m major concern is not to serve the people. It's to make a living and keep your job. And so... The reason I'm standing up is because I'm realizing we need more servant leaders, people who believe and follow God. Yes. And will stand up for the people on behalf of, of what God's word says that looks like. Not based on these, uh, our current social justice or, or other theories, the worldly wisdom of this world has to offer. We need to get godly people into office. I realized that uh, a couple of years ago that there was no uh, business leaders standing up when mm -hmm. everything was falling apart. There was no elected officials standing up. Mm -hmm. And by and large, a lot of pastors weren't standing up. And I was angry at first. And, but God showed me to pray for those people. And he asked me, well, what about you? And so I stood up in that season and said, okay, Lord, I'll pray about running for office and getting involved. And, and then through a series of events, he, he confirmed it. And uh, here I am today running for state senate. I'm glad that uh, God gave you this calling because mm. we need someone like you. Because I, I agree everything that you said. Churches not, are not standing up. Even right now in LA area, all the businesses are open. Everyone is okay with COVID now, except for a lot of churches. Churches, a lot of churches still close their door mm -hmm. because of COVID. Only churches are scared right now church are the only one that are still scared of the virus everyone is okay and everyone learned to live with it we've been there for two years now but church leader and churches are scared what do you think the churches should do at this season of the world i it, think they should be bold in standing up and speaking about all things that our faith touches a lot of churches uh, don't want to talk about politics mm -hmm. they say that it shouldn't mix uh, but I, I firmly believe that what God's given us in this land, we have an ability to vote, to be involved in government. I was reading in Matthew 25, actually, this morning, and one of the parables, there's three parables in that chapter, and one of the parables is the parable of the talents, where he gives one five talents, one two talents, and the last one he gives one. Well, everybody did good with their talents, but the last that had one, he buried it in the dirt. Mm -hmm. His master called him a wicked servant. Because yeah. he took what the master gave him and he made no use of it. He yeah. buried it in the dirt. We as Christians have the ability to affect. It's not the church, that building that we go to. The church is us. And we're equipped for the ministry to go out into this world and affect what's going on in the world. I would encourage churches, pastors, to be bold in their speech. To not worry about their, their nonprofit status, but to be more concerned about Jesus. Mm -hmm. To not be scared of a disease that might get us sick, but to follow the God of the universe who died so that we can live forever. Mm -hmm. We have no fear of death. As, as believers, we truly should have no fear of death. Not that I sh think we should be reckless, but we should be able to be bold and stand up. In the book of Revelation, Jesus' letters, he had seven letters to seven churches. And one of those churches, he told them, I set before you an open door that no one can shut. And that's what the church's doors are in this season. They, they don't need to be shut. Yeah. 
when the pastors shut them themselves, it's very disappointing to me. I think it's time for pastors to stand up. I think it's time for the people of God to stand up boldly in their faith. Talk about like sh shutting down churches. The police and uh, the FBI recently just raided Trump in uh, Florida. What do you think about that incident? Uh, do you think police and FBI are, are law enforcement in general? Are they our friend? Because I support the police for the longest time. And then uh, w w when something like Portland happened, and they, they just didn't do anything and do the right thing. And there certainly are good law enforcement out there. Mm -hmm. And we know that the scriptures tell us that they give us uh, rulers uh, for our protection, mm -hmm. for our good. It talks about that in Roman, Romans. When the government and the p police forces start working against God's righteousness, mm -hmm. we're seeing it right now. There's, we're having a time of judgment in our nation. And if God's people stand up, I believe we can have another season of grace. But if we don't stand up, um, what we're going to have is more of this. Are there good people in the FBI? I would imagine so. Uh -huh. But obviously the leadership in the FBI, they stand with lawlessness. Yeah. And raiding our former president's uh, house over some documents, I, I don't know what that's all about. But do I think they have anything worth raiding him over? I doubt it. I do know that there's many other people that have done wickedness from the Bidens to the Clintons, and they've done nothing, not raided their house, mm -hmm. not even done anything. <laughs> it's so obvious, too. It is. It's so obvious. smoking crack and everything. We have, we have a two-tiered system of justice. Yes. And it's unfortunate. The good people who are standing up for the people right now are being persecuted and prosecuted mm -hmm. by the law, whereas the wicked people who are committing wickedness are allowed to get away with things. And it's, it's very unfortunate. I believe God's bigger than that. I believe we can overcome that if God's people will wake up and stand up. I've learned a lot from you today and uh, know more about you. So uh, is there anything you want to say to your voter? The biggest thing I have to say to the people out there, those voters, is you can do more than vote. I would encourage you that in this season, as a believer, there's more that you can do. I'm just a plumber. I think I have some solutions that we can implement in the legislature here in California, so I got involved. If you're a parent, if you're part of a family, if you're part of a church, you have people you can stand up for, and I would encourage you to get out and get involved as well. Run for school boards, city council, find out what opportunities there are. Take advantage of the opportunities God's given us in this land to stand up for the people. This is what this whole channel has been trying to say. You're not weak. You're not a victim. God gave you this life. You can do something about your life, and you can do something with your life. It can help others. Yes. I think that is the most important message that every Christian needs to give to the world. Oh, so thank you for coming today. Yes, thank and you then, for uh, having me. Yeah, and I'll see you in State Senate. Hopefully so, <laughs> Lord willing. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and please keep this election in your prayer. Please get to know this uh, candidate. Please go to his website and uh, support him. And uh, thank you for watching the show.